Well, it's hard to believe that we poured the concrete for the foundation of our project house just two weeks ago. As you can tell, we're well into the framing stage on the 16,000 square foot monster. Now, there's a lot of different things that happen at this stage that can be useful for you no matter what size home you're building. Come on and I'll show you what I mean. Well, framing is just like anything else. You start from the ground up and when you start at the ground on a wall, it's with your base plate. Now that's this board along the bottom here that all the studs are nailed to. So you can tell this one's a different color than the rest of the studs in our house. All of this is southern yellow pine, but this base plate that we got from Georgia Pacific, it's a different color because it's pressure treated. It has chemicals in it to help prevent it from weathering, from getting moist, and also to keep out termites. Termites won't eat this pressure treated plate. They like this lumber up here. Once they get to this, they turn around and go somewhere else. So whenever you're building a house, you want a pressure treated base plate on it. You also want to bolt it down. When we poured our concrete foundation, we put a J bolt in the concrete itself while it was still wet. Drill the hole in our base plate and set the wall on top of it and put a washer and a nut. That's to hold it down in place. If the house ever gets hit by a high wind, we don't want it to tip over, so we bolt it down. We don't just nail it down. On our exterior wall studs, these are two by six studs that we got from Georgia Pacific. Again, southern yellow pine. Now we didn't go with the two by four for a few different reasons. One, we have a lot of weight on this house and we need a lot of strength to hold it up. This is 50% thicker than a two by four, about 40% stronger, so this was our choice. We also want real low utility bills. This wall is, again, 50% thicker than a two by four. Instead of putting R13 insulation in, we can do R19. The higher the number, the more insulated it is, which means lower utility bills. One thing you might notice a little different on this stud is it's not a continuous piece of lumber. It actually has a joint right here. That's known as a finger joint. It's a very special technique on building studs. Let me show you more about it. Now on the interior of the house, instead of using a two by six stud, we went the two by four stud. These are southern yellow pine from Temple Inland. And we use a two by four inside because we're not bearing as much weight. Plus we don't insulate this wall. There's no insulation whatsoever. So we don't need to spend the money to go to a wider wall. But again, we do have the finger jointed area here on our studs. And there's a number of different reasons. And I've got a pro to tell us why. Kathy Cake from the Southern Pine Council and appreciate you coming in today. Nice to see you, Michael. Well, tell me a little bit about the finger jointed studs. And I see you've got a cutaway right here. Yes. Why are they so important? Well, they're really good because they provide a very straight, stable product. That means they have less tendency to warp and twist than some solid sawn um, stud walls. And they're also very environmentally friendly because we use trims from the end of the sawmills as we make the lumber. So we use the waste from there to make them, and so we don't waste any of the tree. So what would have been waste or thrown out, you actually make a real stud out of. And you said it's, it's straighter and stronger. so. When we look down a wall, our walls are actually going to be straight for right, the first time. Right, so we're going to have, it's much easier to put on your drywall and you won't have as many nail pops or callbacks. Yeah, and I guess it's straighter because it's a lot of short pieces, isn't it, from there to there? Yes, the pieces so. are typically between 5 and 24 inches long. And they have a uh, finger joint profile that's cut on both ends. And then those finger joints are put together. There's some special adhesive that it's applied and then they're squeezed and made in one continuous ribbon and then they're cut to the length that we need for our stud wall. That's yeah. great. And no waste, like you said, and then if we had one continuous piece, it has more of a chance to twist, but since we have a lot of short pieces, they're not going to twist exactly. or warp on us. Right. That's great. How about as far as price, comparing to what people would think of as a normal stud to a finger jointed stud? The, the price um, overall is going to be a little bit more probably than a solid saw and stud on a piece for piece basis. But when you look at an installed cost, it can be the same or even less because you have less waste and because you have less pieces that um, are going to warp or twist. And so it just provides a much better wall, less callbacks. Yeah, a lot less warranty like you were talking about. Right. So for uh, basically the same amount of money, we can have a stronger, straighter wall and it's environmentally friendly at the same time. Exactly. Well, while we're in the framing stage, there's a few other aspects that are very important you really need to see. Let's take a look. Well, it's been a couple of weeks or a lot further along in the framing stage. The guys have been working hard. There's a few things I wanted to remind you about building a strong house because your home's always being hit by winds. If it's not really built strong, you're going to start to see your drywall crack and some nail pops. If it gets a really big wind, a tornado or a hurricane, it could knock it down. If you remember, when we poured our concrete foundation, we put in anchor bolts. The framing crew has come back and set the walls right on top of those anchor bolts. They drilled holes in the bottom plate 
set them on top of the bolts that are in the concrete, and then put on a washer and a nut. That's to make a secure fitting right there so it all holds together in a high wind. Up top, we've done it a little different. Here we have some rafters where they're hitting our top plate. Now, a lot of builders just put a nail on each side of the rafter into the top plate, but the problem is when the wind hits it, it can just pull it out, just like a giant hammer. That wind hits the side of your house, comes up and hits the overhang, and just takes your roof right off. And when the roof comes off, the house falls over. To prevent that from happening, we've added rafter clips. You can see they just started this one, and you can see behind me all the other ones that they have added. Now, that little piece of steel attaches to the top plate of our wall, and it attaches to the rafter. For a wind to take our roof off now, it has to be so strong that it actually shears these nails in half or it rips the steel apart. So it can withstand about three times as much wind and still keep your roof on the house. On the exterior of the house, we put an oriented strand board, OSB. We nailed it into our wall studs, we nailed it into the top plate, the crew nailed it into the bottom plate also, again, to make one uniform structure. So we're bolted to the foundation, we've got nails in all of our studs to this exterior sheathing, plus we've got our raptor clips on, so we've got a very strong house. And doing all of these features only cost a few hundred dollars. So if you're building a new home, make sure they do it to your house.